Hello, Internet users, and welcome back to another video where I provide useless answers to useless questions. Previously, I had made a video talking about some setups you could perform in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Doing these would bring your save file to a doomed state where the game is pretty much impossible to finish, and you'd be forced to start all over from the beginning. Surprisingly, a lot more people seem to be into the idea than I expected, and since I put it up, I've gotten a ton of comments and messages from you viewers informing me of other ways to trap yourself. However, there was one suggestion in particular that really got me thinking. An absolutely insane and evil setup that traps you near the end of the game with seemingly no way out. A plan that, until recently, I thought was completely flawless. But before I can show you how to escape it, first, I'm going to show you how to get yourself into it. For this method, you need to meet the following requirements. Number 1. Have a fighting or poison type Pokémon that knows Rage. Preferably, get one that is not at a high level. In this case, I went with a Primeape. As well, make sure that it is the only thing in your party, and that it does not have a second type that is weak to water. For example, Pokémon like Nidoking and Nidoqueen will not work for what we're about to do. On a related note, you can find the TM for Rage on Route 15, directly to the east of Fuchsia City. Number 2. Use up all of the PP for all of its other moves. There is no move deleter in these games, so this was the next best thing I could think of. It doesn't matter what any of the Pokémon's other moves are, the only important factor is that Rage needs to be the only thing that your Pokémon can use. Number 3. Get rid of all your items. Toss all of your usable items, and then deposit all of your key items into the PC. We want to make sure that there are no potential life-saving tools available to us once we are trapped. Number 4. Enter Lorelei's room and save the game. Congrats. We have now set everything up. While it may not seem like it, we have just put the game into a very terrifying state. How, you ask? Well, let's break it down. Once you enter this room, the only way to leave it is to either win or lose the battle against Lorelei. And because of the steps we've just taken, we're not able to do either anymore. You see, when you begin the fight against her, her first Pokémon is Dugong, which happens to know the move Rest. Now, there is an infamous flaw with the AI in the original games. It causes your opponents to always use a move that is of a type that is super effective against the one you are using, regardless of whether or not it inflicts damage. Rest is a Psychic-type move that causes the user to sleep for two turns, healing their HP completely. And because your Pokémon is a Fighting or Poison type, Rest will be the only thing the Dugong will ever use. And naturally, the only move that we can use is Rage. In Generation 1, Rage functioned a little differently than how it does now. Once used, it will only consume a single PP point, and then the Pokémon will proceed to use it every turn afterward without further input from the player. While it is acting as a continuous attack for every turn afterward, it will not use up any more PP, and the only way for it to stop is for either the battle to end, or for the user to faint. This puts you into a state where you are endlessly dealing a small amount of damage against an opponent that will always respond by fully healing itself. For my Primeape, even if it manages to land three critical hits in a row, it is still not strong enough to take Dugong down to even half of its health. And before you say, well, won't Dugong eventually run out of PP for rest? I have another design flaw to point out in these games. In Generation 1, the AI's Pokémon, for some reason, do not actually use PP. This means that they can use their moves as many times as they want. Now with all of this in mind, I'm sure you've realized how this makes the game seemingly impossible. The Dugong will do nothing but heal itself infinitely. And because the only move we have left is Rage, we can't exhaust our own PP, which means we'll never be able to use Struggle, which means we'll never be able to lose the battle by taking recoil damage. The battle will go on forever, with the same few actions repeating over and over until you turn it off. This particular setup was stated by only one person in the comments. Of all the ideas sent to me, this was easily the most interesting one. This person has also made a short video compiling this and a few more of these potential infinite loops. Of course, I'll leave a link down to that in the description. So well done, Crystal. It seems the game is indeed now locked into an impossible state. We're stuck in a room with nothing to do except to enter into an unwinnable battle. There are no items to use, and because we saved in here, reloading won't do us any good either. We're so close to the end of the game, but because we exploited a few design oversights, we now have no way to continue on like the game intended. It seems like the only thing we can do now is start over with a new save file. Or maybe we could do something else. Like I said earlier, I have actually come up with a solution to this puzzle. 
Because of the way the AI is programmed, combined with its limitless PP, there is nothing we can do about Dugong healing itself. This means that the only way out of here is to lose the battle by taking recoil damage from Struggle. However, the only way for us to be able to use Struggle is to fully deplete all of our remaining PP. But like I mentioned before, if the move hits, it will only use up one PP and then continue on endlessly without further cost. The key words being, if the move hits. I don't recall if it's the same across all generations, but for here, missing an attack will still cause PP to go down by one. Some of you are probably thinking though, but Rage has a 100% accuracy rate, so it wouldn't be able to miss at all, and that's a fair point. However, yet again, I have to bring another error within the game's programming to your attention. You see, the game checks accuracy like this. It generates a number ranging from 0 to 255. The generated number would then be compared with the accuracy of the used move, to determine whether or not the move will hit. For instance, because the move Rage is supposed to have 100% accuracy, it will compare the generated number with the maximum value of 255. A move will only hit if the generated number is less than that of the maximum value set by the move's accuracy. However, the problem with the programming is that the game only checks if the generated number is less than the maximum value rather than being less than or equal to it. What this means is, if the generated number happens to be the maximum value of 255, then the game will register that as a miss, even though the move is supposed to have a 100% chance of hitting. Remembering the count zero is a number, this means that all 100% accuracy moves have a 1 in 256 chance of missing. This means that their true accuracy is actually 99.6109%, with a 0.3891% chance of missing. So now that we know that having an attack miss still depletes PP, and that it is possible for Rage to miss the opponent, that means that it should be theoretically possible to use up all of the moves PP. From there, you'd be forced to use Struggle against the regenerating Dugong until you faint. And this loss would, of course, bring you back to the last Pokémon Center you used, thus ending the loop. But what exactly are the odds of such a thing occurring? Well, for the sake of this example, let's keep using my Primeape. I've used no PP ups to increase the maximum PP of Rage. As well, when I entered the room, all of my Primeape's other moves had their PP depleted beforehand, and its Rage is full at the base maximum PP of 20. So in order to escape this trap that has been set up, Rage is going to have to miss Dugong 20 times in a row. If it lands even once, then we'll just trigger an endless battle and you'll have to reset and try again. Even if Rage manages to miss while it's in a continuous attack state, the PP will not go down and the move will just resume the next turn. Since Rage has a 0.3891% chance of missing when used just once, the percent chance of this happening 20 times consecutively looks like this. Or, we could just say that this is approximately a 1 in 68 quintessillion chance. And just a reminder, this is with Rage having only 20 PP. If you were to increase the maximum PP of Rage beforehand, this would only make the chances even more insane. To give you all an example of how ridiculous this is, let's compare it with another occurrence that is often seen in the Pokémon games. Shiny Pokémon. In Generation 3, the chances of encountering a shiny Pokémon were 1 in 8,192, a significant difference from Rage's 1 in 256 chance. Now obviously, if either of these things were to occur, the chances of them happening consecutively become dramatically lower each time. By following the same formula as before, we can chart how the numbers decrease with each continuous attempt. And before you freak out at the sight of all these digits, keep in mind that the only thing that is important here is the E notation values at the end of each number. E notation is just a way to represent really large or small numbers without writing out all of the zeros. With that in mind, notice that Rage missing 20 times in a row has an E notation value of negative 49, while the closest number to this in the other column is negative 47, at attempt number 12. Now for the majority of you that still have absolutely no idea what the heck I just said, I'll sum it up simply. Assuming the math and my understanding are correct up to this point, you are more likely to encounter 12 shiny Pokémon in a row than to have Rage miss 20 times in a row in Gen 1. And there you have it. Proof that the soft lock in Lorelei's room is technically possible to escape from. I mean, no one is ever going to be able to do it, and you're still much better off starting the game over from the beginning. But the point is, I proved someone wrong on the internet. And at the end of the day, isn't that all that matters? 
So sorry, Crystal. It looks like this little impossible situation of yours isn't so impossible after all. You thought you had it all figured out. But little did you know, I had nothing better to do today than to earn the award for finding the most useless piece of Pokemon trivia. And that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tell me down below how pointless the video was. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go play something that's not Pokemon for a while. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. This was supposed to actually come out a long while back, but unfortunately, as it turns out, kids, real life is busy as hell. Anyways, I uh, just want to say, give a quick thank you to my friend Trevor for helping me go over all of the math in this video. Stay tuned for more that is hopefully coming soon. Bye bye